Good afternoon. I hope you all had a great lunch, yes, and great conversation at our table topics. So I'm Candida Brush. I am the Vice Provost of Global Entrepreneurial Leadership at Babson, and I oversee the centers, our entrepreneurial centers, and our applied research projects. I'm very happy to introduce um, one of the best teachers we have at Babson College, and that is Professor Heidi Neck, the Jeffrey Timmons Chair in Entrepreneurship. And you are in for a treat. This is going to be an interactive, terrific session where you're actually going to have to participate in a design thinking exercise. So with no further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Heidi. I'm going to help her. I'll be in the back. But it's here's Heidi Neck. Viability and viability. 
feasibility is, can it be done? Viability is, can we make money doing it? Any undergraduate business student, any MBA student on this planet will be able to answer those two questions. But see, Babson students have a different way of thinking. And they start with desirability. What do people need? And that's the essence of design thinking. Finding out what do people truly need and then creating something to meet those needs. Not just building something and then go finding a market, but finding the market and then building something to address that market. And there's a particular technique that I'm gonna bring you through as much as I possibly can in the time allowed it for you to practice design thinking. Because we're going to spend most of our time learning how to identify people's needs and turning those needs into opportunities. Sound good? Yes. Woohoo! Yeah, we're having fun, aren't we? Yeah, one hour makes it. Seems like a lifetime. Okay. We're all going to be working on a challenge together. And that challenge is how might we inspire alumni of Babson College and friends of the college to deeply engage with us. On your tables, each of you should have a handout. Please put one of those handouts in front of you. It just says design thinking. <laughs> on page one, the cover page, you will see something, an empty box that says, how might we? In that box, I want you to write this down so you don't forget what we're working on. So in that box, on the cover page, please write down how might we inspire alumni and friends to deeply engage with Babson College. For those of you already generating ideas in your head right now, stop it. This is not a time to be generating ideas. That's what other Babson, non-Babson people do. They look at a question and they immediately generate ideas. We're not those people. Babson people are different. So just bear with me as we go through this process. I want to first talk about the mindset that is required for design thinking. And it requires three things. The first is you have to play the role of a need finder, really understanding what's going on, what the problem is. Once you understand what people need, then we can play the role of a creator, identifying solutions to meet those needs. Once we do that, then we play the role of an entrepreneur. That's the person that gets it done and gets it started. At Babson, we focus on all three. But right now, we're going to pay more attention to need finding and playing the role of the creator than we are actually the entrepreneur. So we're going to start off with need finding. So let's do a quick exercise. And feel free just to yell out answers. If I can't hear you, I'll yell, I'll say I can't hear you. Quickly look at this picture. What does this woman need? Ladder. A chat. Okay, now you're getting someplace. See, normal people will say she needs a ladder. Babson people will say she needs to reach something on a higher shelf. See, if we just said that this woman needs a ladder, the only thing we're going to do is create variations on a ladder. But if we rephrase the need in terms of an action, what does she really need? Imagine all the ideas we could come up with if we said, what are all the ways <coughs> this woman can figure out how to reach something on a higher shelf? See, the simple takeaway here is that needs are verbs. Solutions are nouns. If you try to jump to a solution too soon, or if you confuse a solution with a need, you're not going to create anything very innovative. So very important. Solutions are nouns. She needs a ladder. Bad. Needs are verbs. She needs a way to reach something on a higher shelf. That opens up possibilities for ideas later on. 
So other examples of needs, not for this picture, but just how we word needs as verbs is, we need to reach something on a high shelf, we need to rest our legs, we need to relieve our aching back, we need to expand our professional network, or we need to feed my dog when I'm not home. None of those are solutions, right? All of them are verbs. That's what need finding is all about. So we're going to practice need finding in this ballroom right now. So this is what we're going to do. On your tables, we're going to start sharing stories. And I need some of you, not all of you, because we don't have time for everyone to share the story at the table, but I need some of you to tell a story about a time when you were either connected, felt really deeply connected to Babson, or even a time when you felt deeply disconnected from Babson. So let me give you an example of a story, because a story requires vivid detail. It requires emotion and feeling. There's a beginning and a middle and an end. So again, as I said, here's my story. As I said, I've been at Babson for 14 years. In 2008, a great man named Jeff Timmons. Anyone know who that man is? Raise your hand if you know who Jeff Timmons is. Jeff Timmons is kind of the founding father of entrepreneurship at Babson, particularly entrepreneurship education. And when I came to Babson, or went to Babson in 2001, Jeff was considered the master teacher around entrepreneurship. Students were craving to get in Jeff's class. And I have a deep passion around teaching, and anything that I can do to improve my teaching, I'm all over. So as soon as I got to Babson, I was intimidated by Jeff Timmons, but he took me under his wing and mentored me every day that I was at Babson. And in 2008, he dropped dead of a massive heart attack. I was devastated. I didn't even realize how much in love I was with this man until he died and how much he impacted my life. And in 2008, shortly after I got tenure, five months after Jeff died, and everyone on campus knew how I felt about Jeff, I was given a chair, an endowed chair in Jeffrey Timmons' name. Now you may go, what's an endowed chair? To those of you not in academia, it doesn't mean much. To those of us in academia, it means, hey, you're being recognized for great work, Heidi. And not only are you being recognized for great work, you're being recognized for great work at a very young age because I was given an endowed chair as an associate professor, which wasn't done. It's just not done. And it was at that point in time I felt like Babson truly appreciated what I brought to the college, what I could bring to the college, and how I could represent the future of the college. That represents a deep connection. That's my story of Jeff Timmons. That's my story of being connected to Babson College. So what I want you all to do is at your table, identify three people, star, 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 to tell a story about how you've either been connected or disconnected to the college. And for those of you not telling a story, on page two of your worksheet, you'll see a sheet that looks like this. And my highlighted area, it says story notes. That's the only box I want you to focus on. As someone is telling this story, jot down notes. What's resonating with you about this story? What emotions are coming out? That's all I want you to do. Write down notes about the story and anything that surprises you. Are there any questions before we begin? Three people at a table will each tell a story. I will give you three minutes to tell the story. When three minutes is up, I'm going to yell time, go to the second person. That second person will be given three minutes. Then I'm going to yell time, and then we'll go to the third person. Three minutes, and we'll yell time. So all you have to do is listen to stories and take notes. It's easy, right? Are you ready? Say yes, Heidi. All right, your three minutes starts now. All right, time. Are you with me? Yes. Are you with me? Yes. All right, give yourselves a round of applause. From storytelling, from storytelling, we're better able to identify the needs of people. And remember, needs are not solutions. Needs are not nouns, needs, or verbs. 
So what you all are going to do as a group at your table, and if your table is a little crowded, feel free to separate it into two for this, this, this discussion. From the stories that you heard, it's now your job to identify the needs inherent in those stories. And I'll give you an example. So the story I chose about Jeff Timmons probably resulted in a few needs, but these are some of the needs I recognize in my own story. The need to receive recognition, again, an action that's not a solution. The need to be a part of something non-traditional. Remember I told you that endowed chairs just weren't given to, to young professors. I also needed to feel supported, and I needed to feel challenged. These are all the needs that emerged out of my story about my experience with Jeff Timmons, his death, and Babson awarding me an endowed chair position. So what you all are going to do as a group for about, I'm going to gauge how I hear the audience talking, but six to seven minutes. As a group, think about all the, the three stories that you heard, and in the right part of your worksheet, record all the needs. Don't worry about connecting the need to a story. You just want to start thinking about what are all the needs. And you also need to police yourself. Make sure that you're not coming up with solutions, that in fact you are identifying the needs from those stories. Are there any questions before we let you start talking? Okay? All right. One, two, three, go. About six minutes to start. All right, time. Everyone put your pencils down. Shut your mouths. Are you with me? Yes. Now we're going to move quickly into the next exercise. Hopefully you have a rather extensive list of needs that you've identified from the three stories that you told at your table. So now what I simply want you to do is identify what you think as a group are the top three that you want to work on? What are the most interesting or compelling or dire needs that you were able to identify? And just record your top three similarly like I did right here. And you have five minutes to talk as a group to decide on your top three as a group. As a group, top three needs you want to work on. All right, time. Are you with me? Are you with me? St who said no? Stand up. Stand up. Good job. Going against the grain. Nice job. All right. All right, now what we're going to do is we're moving a little bit into the creator role. This is where we've identified needs. And now we're going to actually generate ideas. This is kind of just a simple, important takeaway. Needs emerge from the stories that we tell, and ideas emerge from those needs. Needs emerge from the stories that we tell, and ideas emerge from those needs. So what you all are going to do is you have three needs that you've decided that you're going to be working on. For each of those needs, you're going to start generating ideas to create solutions to meet those needs. So for example, these were my three needs. The needs to feel I'm part of something non-traditional, the need to feel recognized, the need to feel challenged. So remember, the overarching design challenge that we have here is how might we inspire alumni and friends of the college to deeply engage. So you always want to keep that big question in the back of your mind. So, in other words, how can we inspire and engage alumni and friends by making them feel like they're something, part of something non-traditional? How can we engage and inspire alumni and friends by making them feel recognized? And how might we engage alumni and friends of the college by making them feel challenged by the college? So whatever your three needs are, you're just simply filling in the blank. How might we inspire alumni and friends to engage with the college by blank? And that blank are the, is your need that you've discovered as a group. Is that clear, or do I need to rephrase what I just said? 
rephrase. Okay. So this is probably one of the most difficult parts of design thinking, which is exactly why I said, do I need to rephrase? Because this concept of needs is not as easy as one would expect. At this point in the exercise, you should have three needs that your group has agreed on that they're going to work on, correct? Yes. Okay. Those three needs should be worded in action verbs, such as what I have here, correct? Okay. I didn't hear a correct on that. So they should not be solutions. They should be verbs. Yes. Okay, good. Thank you to the right. That was a past student of mine. Um, with each one of your needs, you're going to start generating ideas to meet those needs. But you have to keep in mind the challenge, which is all about alumni and friends of Babson and our ability to connect and engage them. So these examples up here is, I'm going to start generating ideas so that alumni and friends can feel like they're part of something non-traditional because it was a need that emerged through my story. Then I'm going to start generating ideas that engage alumni and friends so that they feel recognized because that need came from my story. And then I'm going to brainstorm on ideas where we can actually challenge our alumni and friends so that then they're more deeply connected with the college. So for each one of these needs, you're just going to spend five minutes brainstorming new ideas. And I'm going to do it in five-minute chunks. So you're going to put your need one here on your next page, your need two, and your need three. So have you turned the page yet? Turn the page to, yes, you'll see three boxes, and it says creator at the top. So you'll see a space for your need one, for your need two, and your need three. Those three needs should be the same needs that you wrote on the previous page. If you understand now, please say yes. yes. All right. For the first five minutes, can I have your attention, please? Shh. For the first five minutes, you're going to brainstorm solutions to meet need number one. For the second five minutes, you're going to brainstorm solutions to meet team need two. And for the last five minutes, you're going to brainstorm solutions to meet need three. Now, I want to remind you about the rules of brainstorming because we've been in these rooms before where we've been told to generate ideas. And the rules of brainstorming are just as alive today as they were in 1959 when Alex Osborne created brainstorming. But we forget the rules. So don't forget, this is not a time to evaluate the ideas or to criticize the ideas. This is a time to encourage crazy ideas. There's no such thing as a bad idea in this case. This is a time to listen, to build on the ideas of others. If you don't have an idea, don't force it. But listen to others, because I truly believe some of us are creators and some of us are revisers, meaning some of us are really good at generating from scratch, but others of us are much better at building on the work of others. Doesn't matter what role you play, just play a role. Stay focused on your topic, meaning focus on the need that you're trying to generate solutions for. Be visual if you want. Some people like to draw as opposed to write down text. Again, listen one conversation at a time and go for quantity. Go for quantity. In the five minutes that I give just for need one, you should have at least 17 new ideas. 17. Okay. I'll tell you why 17 if some of you meet 17. So I won't tell you why I chose the number 17, and there is a reason, but unless you meet that, that, that milestone, you're never going to know the reason. Okay, your first five minutes for your need number one. Are you ready? Yeah. Starts now. Go. All right, time, everyone stop. Are you with me? All right, everyone come back. All right, 
Raise your hand if you got 17 ideas. Woo, table over here. If you're with me, please say yes as loud as you can. All right, we did have one table reach 17. We also had one table reach 16. Oh, and a table over here uh, reached 19. So now to answer your question, why the number 17? Why the number 17? It's completely arbitrary. Because I have found when I don't give a number that's a stretch number, then you don't stretch yourself. So you stop at the first, second, or third idea because we typically fall in love with our first, second, or third idea. And sometimes the greatest ideas are farther down the list. At least they're a seed of a greater idea. So 17 was arbitrary. Now what I also noticed as I walked around a room and also as Candy and I consulted on how you all are doing, we found that some of you are stuck on this idea generation, that you're not really sure what a good idea is. And let, us, let me remind you that we're not worried about good ideas right now. We're just worried about getting out as many ideas as we possibly can. So we were at this table, they were working on um, a need around support for alumni. And they were stuck, they didn't have any ideas. And I said, well, what if every alumni was given five or $10,000 to start a new business? That's support. What if every time an alum or a friend of the college came from outside of the country to Babson College, we gave them free lodging at the Executive Conference Center? That's support. It doesn't matter right now if that's not possible, because trust me, that's not possible. but it's starting to generate ideas, okay? So give yourself the permission to come up with even bad ideas. Give yourself permission to come up with bad ideas. All right, now for the next five minutes, you're gonna move on to need number two. And now that at least three groups have generated at least 17 ideas, now I'm gonna push the envelope to 20. 20 ideas, push yourselves. You have five minutes for need number two, starting now, go. All right, time. Put your pencils down. Muhammad. All right, are you with me? All right, in the spirit of time, we're not gonna go to need number three because I have a feeling need number one and need number two are your favorite needs and you don't really have the energy to focus on need number three. So turn the page. Of the ideas that you have generated, either from need one or need two, Identify your favorite idea as a group and sketch it. That means draw your idea in action. Make it come alive. Can we, can we bring the room down, down? All right, eyes up here just for 10 seconds maximum. Eyes up here. Sketching an idea may seem silly to some of you. And for those of you that say yes to sketching an idea, 
All I ask is that you keep an open mind. Because, because see, when you actually start to draw an idea in action, you start to realize what gaps there are in your idea. You start to realize that it's not as easy to bring it to life as you think it is. And you also start to identify some really critical questions that need to be addressed in order to come up with the next iteration of that idea. Because see, I always tell my students, if you can't draw your idea in action, how will you ever possibly bring your idea to life? If you can't simply make it work on paper, what makes you think you're going to work it in the real world? So I want you to just go with this process for literally four minutes. And as a group, try to draw your idea in action. It may include alumni reacting to whatever it is the solution is. But just give it a shot, OK? Your four minutes starts now. Is there anyone in this room that would like to share their idea? Back there? All right, if, if there's someone from the back table who'd like to share their idea, please come to the podium. Yep, you need to have the spotlight. What's your name? Paul. Paul? Hi, I'm yep. Heidi. Nice to meet you. All right, thank Hi. you, Paul. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, so um, the need that we talked about was the need that we all feel to be part of this community and be part of a community of students of Babson and help each other and all that stuff. So um, what we have come up with, I'm trying to figure out what we've drawn, but uh, is, is the concept of, you know, when, when you graduate, you can buy a brick in Babson with your name on it. We want to actually make that brick a virtual brick um, that you can start to share around. So if this is part on, on an app on your phone, you meet another Babson student, you can exchange bricks. And by exchanging those and by tracking where those bricks have been before you've taken one from another student, you can see the whole global network, you can see the community, and then you can start to look at um, the, what else do we have? Uh, an, a map, so the, the, the map of the world, and you find other students with these bricks that you can then go to. So the solution here is really, you exchange something, but in the modern world, we just exchange electronic bricks in this case. That was wow. it. Nice job. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. Paul, I think you, you're. The there's, most important There's piece, money Paul. to this, yes. Um, and uh, a big part of this is also indeed being able to contribute to charity. So you can, when you're somewhere, um, buy additional bricks or upgrade or something like that where there's then a local charity aspect with regard to education in the countries that you're meeting people or exchanging your, your brick. So, nice. Sorry. Nice. Nice job. <laughs> I think we have one more group who wants to share their idea. Come on up. This is the guy who questioned my 17. It was a valid question, no? What's your name? Okay. What's your huh? name again? Really? Okay. What's your name? Ma uh, I'm Mazen Ashanbari, Mazen. class of uh, 2011, okay. MBA. The upper the Ashan shake. Okay. So uh, we decided to create an app, how creative. Um, it's a very, very simple app. You'll have either a social or a business objective that you, when you first log in, and then with the social, uh, if you go into the social um, side, you'll get um, something that is location-based, uh, uh, um, connecting you with people that are actually around you. So you visit Bogota, Colombia, and you want to know who, where are, who, are there any Babson students around. It's kind of, you click a button and then you see how many Babson students you can actually connect to them through that. You can actually get hosted, kind of like a couch surfer. Um, you could uh, meet up for a dinner or um, get hosted for a dinner. Um, there is a BuzzFeed and there is a multimedia, um, you know, like posting pictures and posting ideas on that. The business side is if you are, have a startup and you have a specific space and 
you want to reach out to alumni that are interested in uh, fintech, that you can actually see what alumni are actually in fintech. You actually can post questions to them. They can help you out. Um, and by all of that, it has to be tied with a recognition system. The more active you are on that, the more cookies you get, the more whatever it is that you know, we want to reward those uh, people for their active participation in this app. That's the only way for something like this to work um, so we can fix the deal directory, uh, the, the, the actually the alumni directory. Thank That's you, Maza. Yes, nice job. Now, no, in the spirit of time, I'm sorry, I, I hate to be the person to do this, I know. Um, but in the spirit of time, there was no way I could get through the entire design thinking process and have all of you share your ideas. But you know, this is an important question of how might we inspire alumni and friends to engage. So if you think you actually have an idea that you want to put your voice behind and you want us to hear, that's my email address up there. And it's also on the front of your workshop, worksheet. I promise to make your ideas go to the right place. So I will take that responsibility. Design thinking for us, the mindset, again, was around need finding, being a creator, and also the entrepreneur. And we didn't even get to the entrepreneur part. But for those of you that haven't been around Babson lately, in the Olin Graduate School, there is a sign that says, those that dream, we call dreamers. Those that do, we call entrepreneurs. And so this is at the stage where you take some of your early ideas and you go out and test them. You go out and you take action, because at Babson we say action trumps everything. And I also added a worksheet that I tend to use with some of my classes, just so you have it there. Once again, I asked early on how many of you were alum of, alums of the college. How many of you are just friends of the college, not alumni? Just friends. Raise your hands if you're just friends. Okay. It's kind of you that I want to address in my final remarks here before I hand it over to our final speaker today. Because I hope through this session and also through Professor Bliss's session tomorrow that you get a feel for what it's like to be a student at Babson because we are an action-oriented campus. We do things that are relevant. And I want to share with you part of my teaching philosophy. And I know as I've gone around, I, I think I've counted nine of my students in the room. And I've also counted another handful of people that have been in my educator training programs. And I want to share with you an excerpt from a letter I recently wrote. Um, it's, it's an open letter to my students. And those of my students that are in the room right now, you've never seen this because I just created it. And I'm going to give it to my future students. And I'd like to share part of it with you now if you would just indulge me for two minutes. It says, Dear Student, I want to thank you for being a part of my life, because, because my life because you have shaped who I am as an educator. I can never stop learning how to teach if or when I do, I cease being an effective teacher. Every student that enters my classroom has taught me something about teaching, and I want to share these lessons with you. You have helped me learn what works, how to keep you engaged, how much I can push you. I understand the importance of looking you in the eye reading your body language, and, flip, and listening, really listening. I anticipate and leverage those unexpected teaching moments that are unforgettable yet uncomfortable. Mohammed, we have one of those. These moments are those moments that bind us. I strive to practice what I preach. I demand that you think and act entrepreneurially, which requires you to develop creative solutions, take early action, and accept and learn from small losses, to improvise when things don't go your way. And I have to do the same, because teaching entrepreneurship at BAPS in college requires continuous innovation, fearless experimentation, and structured chaos. I have learned that I must teach to excite, inspire, motivate, and even shock you. I strive to create the unexpected in order to capture your attention and spark enthusiasm for entrepreneurship because many of you that take my entrepreneurship class are required to. Most importantly, my approach to teaching is action-based. It has to be, because if one wants to learn entrepreneurship, one has to do entrepreneurship. Every day, I strive to create a learning laboratory for experimentation and for practice. You have taught me that action-based learning creates a sense of shared ownership in the learning process. And finally, I just want to conclude with my last, I got a flip, sorry. 
I, as an educator at Babson College, have an, has an enormous responsibility. Entrepreneurship is a complex phenomenon, chaotic and lacking any notion of linearity. As an educator, I have the responsibility to develop your discovery, your thinking, your reasoning, your experimentation, and your implementation skills so that you may lead, manage, and excel in uncertain environments so that you can capture the right opportunity at the right time for the right reason. Entrepreneurs of all kinds impact the world. So entrepreneurship education is a necessary and formidable change agent. I really want you, my students, to do something great, take action, and change your world. I will do everything I can to facilitate the journey. So keep entrepreneuring. Thank you very much.